Hi guys, this is Lucy from Book Widgets, and today I'm going to show you how to create student work in Book Widgets. You'll see that when you're using Book Widgets, that a lot of student work will already be automatically created. Of course, as a teacher, you still have to take a look at it and see where it goes right and where it goes wrong for that one student. So the first thing you do is sign into Book Widgets, go to bookwidgets.com, click on the sign in button and sign into your account. You're now in your Book Widgets account. Of course, you first need to create a widget or a digital assignment with Book Widgets, send it to your students, and of course, your students will submit the work. And when they click on the submit button, that's where you come in and that's where you can start grading and reviewing the student work. I've sent my students a widget or a digital worksheet and they submitted their answers already. So now I have to grade their work. So the first thing you're going to do is go to grades and reporting. Then it depends on which one you have to click here. So you can go to my courses or you can go to student work. If you're working with book widgets just inside the book widgets website and always share a widget link from this website, you go to student work. If you're using book widgets inside a learning management system like Google Classroom, Microsoft Teams for education, uh, Moodle, Canvas, Blackboard, Schoology and also Smart School for the Belgian teachers, and then you go to my courses and you'll see that the grades are linked to when you're using book widgets inside your learning management system. In this case, I've just sent an assignment link to my students. They clicked on it and they made the assignment. So I go to student work. Then I can find all my students' work right here. So I'm going to create an assignment that's called European Capitals. So just click on the assignment and then you're in the reporting dashboard. So here, a lot of things happen and I'm going to show you exactly what you have to do as a teacher. There are two ways of reviewing student work. The first way is to review student work student by student or to review student work question by question. I'm going to show you both today. So in this reporting dashboard, you can see all the questions that are in your digital assignment or widget. You can see all the answers. So all the students that submitted to the work to you as a teacher, and then you have some statistics as well. So here in this list of answers, you just click on the first student to open her work. And then her work opens, so you have a summary, so you can see all the correct answers and all the wrong answers. And you can just see that it's already automatically graded, so it already gives some grades. You just take a quick look at the student work, and if the grades are correct, just click on this arrow to go to another student. Here again, you can see that the student made a mistake. And this is also a mistake, but of course it's graded correctly. Then just click on the arrow to go to the next student. Of course, you can make some changes as well. So if the automatic grading isn't correct, you made a mistake and the computer made a mistake with you, um, you can still change some things. So in this case, my student made a spelling mistake, but it's still Rome. So she got the answer right, but she had a spelling mistake. So, of course, the computer um, counts it as incorrect, but you can still change the grades if you want. There are a few ways to change the grades. You can just click here on the grade and give it another number. So I give, them, give her a two out of three. And then you can see, of course, this stays red. You can also just mark the student's answer correct. Do this by clicking on the X, click on mark correct, and now you can see that Book Widgets takes the answer of the student. In this case, this is not the right way to go, but because my student will not see that she made a spelling mistake. So in this case, I'm just keeping it incorrect, red, and I'm just changing the grade so she can see that she got two points out of three, but made a spelling mistake. And to make things a little bit clearer, I can also enter comments to give feedback to my student. So below every question, I can enter a feedback comment right here. So mind your spelling. So in this case, my students will receive some feedback. 
And the last thing we've added to book widgets recently is another way to give feedback. You can now comment in your students' answers. So here I can click on this word and then I can see that there's a comment section entering here specifically to this word I marked right here. So there's a one coming here and I can just enter the comment. Mind your spelling. Make sure to click in the blank space to save your comments. Of course, I can answer another comment, just click here and another number will appear and it will be in, this, in the right order. You can find the number one here and you can find, and students can find the one here. Like this. But this is one thing you can do. I also added another question that the, the students before didn't have uh, to show you how it works here. So this is actually a question that cannot be automatically graded because it's an open question. So every student will answer something else. So in this case, this new comment feature is really handy. So first, what you have to do, of course, is give um, this question a grade because it cannot be automatically graded. So you'll have to give it a grade. Then, of course, I can enter a comment below the question or I can start indicating words inside my student's answer and add some comments. So here I can say specialties are pizza, Brussels sprouts, waffles, fries, and so on. Pizza is not a Belgian specialty, so I can just click on it and enter a comment. This is an Italian specialty. Then of course there's the waffles, so this is a spelling mistake. Just click on it and just enter the right word. Click on the blank space to save your comment. That's it. Of course, there's something else you can do. You can mark entire areas. So if you want to more mark a complete sentence, then you can just mark it like this and a comment will appear like this. If you want to mark everything, you can do that as well. So here, the other words will be marked a little bit darker. All your comments will stack beside this question. If you want to delete a comment, it's easy to just click on the X and your comment will be deleted. So that's it for this new feature. Then click here to go on to the next student, review your work and go on to the next student until you cannot go on anymore. And that means that you've reviewed all your students' work. So that's how quick it goes. This was one way of reviewing work student per student. Of course, there's another way I've told you. So you can also grade question by question. Just click on the first question here. And then you'll see that for this question, you get a list of answers on that particular question of each student. So you can scroll down and you can see all your students answer on that question. So you can do the same and you can enter a comment here. If students made the same mistake, you can just copy the comment, scroll down and paste the comment uh, for that student where it's also fitting. Again, here there's an arrow uh, because you have another question in your worksheet. Click here and then you can grade this question as well. Question by question, enter some comments when needed and you are done. Of course, there are some statistics as well. So first, you can see the average score on each question. This is a score you have to check after grading because when you change grades, this will change as well. So what does this say? So if your average score, this means all your students have submitted this question, and the average score of all your students is 60% or 80%, um, then this means that this question is rather good. When the average score is below 50%, you know that students didn't understand your question or that they didn't understand the content of your question. So those are the average score statistics. Then of course, when you see your student answers, you have a date or a submission date, so the day when they submitted their grades. And of course, also the hour when they clicked on the submit button, the total score, and then we have the one and the two. So this represents the, 
the questions. This is the first question and this is the second question and there's a general overview. So in this case, all my students did pretty good. Um, of course, you can also see if they have, if they score zero points on a question, it will be marked red instead of yellow or green. You can sort these statistics, you can sort the names, you can sort the dates, and you can sort the total score. Sorting the total score is very interesting if you want to get a quick look on your best students and your worst students. When you scroll down, you can see some extra statistics. This calculates the mean of all your students' grades, the median as well, the minimum score and the maximum score. So in one overview, you get a lot of statistics. Uh, so you know in just a blink what you have to do as a teacher and what students are behind and what students are in front of the classroom. You can also click on the bars. So here you can see the score and you can see that the two students have a score of three out of six. So you can click on the bar and immediately see which students are those students. You can also click on the other bars and you can also see the student that has the best score as well. When you're done grading, it's time to send back the work to the students with, of course, the feedback you wrote in all the comment sections. You can do this by clicking on this little wheel and then select all results. Of course, you can also just check the separate boxes of just a few students you want to return the work to. But in this case, I'm going to do everything at once. So click on this cogwheel, select all the results, click again, and then click on return results. In this case, you get a long list of all the names of the students and the email they added in the submission form. You can change the subject line if you want, and you can change the message. Here is a checkbox to include correction and grades. This is by default enabled. So students get, of course, the grades and the correction. If you disable this checkbox, students will only get the feedback without knowing what they have done right or wrong or without knowing their grades. So they'll just read the feedback you added below the questions. When this is okay for you, just click on return work and wait until this bar is filled up 100% and only after that you can close this dialog. You can see here all these arrows appear, so this means that the work has been returned. If there's no arrow behind the name of the student, you know that you still have to return the work. So that's it for the Book Widgets reporting dashboard. I hope you've learned a lot of new things and know now how to grade efficiently and how to quickly review student work uh, and being able to give a lot of feedback to your students as well. Bye.